pretty straightforward. You go ahead and just slide it out. Very easy here. Transparent lid there. We've got our commemorative plate. Pretty sweet. So uh, we'll go ahead and pop that guy back in there. Pull this guy out. And uh, take a look at some of the additional accessories that come here uh, within our product. So of course we have a specialized SLI uh, ribbon and this is an extended blank to allow you to go ahead and have two triple slot cards in the event that you were going to go ahead and run two Mars cards. In addition to that, uh, we've also got uh, the display connectivity on the card we're going into, but in the event that somebody's still running uh, VGA, uh, we do supply a DVI to VGA adapter. And then here, uh, this is a special PCIe sustainer. So uh, let's go ahead and take the star of the show out here itself. Oh, wow. Before we get to that guy, we're going to go ahead and just pop that off and uh, note our last item in here, which is, of course, our uh, setup guide and uh, installation. If you want to make sure and reference this, to make sure to be able to get uh, the latest version of GPU Tweak that we have currently released uh, that will match up for this card and we'll go into GPU Tweak later. Uh, of course, you also get your nice ROG case badge and then uh, your normal setup guide. Uh, which goes ahead and denotes to you the ins and outs, connections, and installation. All right, folks, there it is. Uh, just, just literally a beast of a card. This is just unprecedented in not only terms of the performance, the design, uh, the overall quality in terms of what we're doing in terms of the actual heatsink assembly, uh, the PCIe sustainer bracket, just pretty much everything about this card screams upper echelon in terms of design, reliability, uh, performance, and just, just the overall aesthetic in terms of the, the actual heatsink assembly as well. So here we can see we actually have the card running, and right off the bat, of course, outside of the huge profile, you can tell that you've got these two large 12 centimeter fans. And, uh, that's partially before we go into some of the actual design implementations, something that you can already take notice of uh, and something that we're very proud of. This is a massive card in terms of the performance that it's able to offer, but it's very quiet. Uh, in most systems, once it's actually enclosed within a chassis, it's going to almost essentially be inaudible. Uh, at idle, it's generally going to be running sub 22 uh, dB. Uh, less than that. You can see here where we're running a very high workload, not just one monitor, but three monitors. We're running native 3D vision surround at uh, maxed out sentence here in Unigen, Heaven 2.5, DX11, tessellation enabled, all those uh, good uh, image quality and uh, eye candy features that you want turned on. And you can see that the card is overall quite quiet. Uh, and we're running those full GTX 580 cores at full normal default clock. So uh, you can definitely see that uh, in terms of the heatsink design, it's definitely doing its job. Now, for you guys that I'm sure want to know, what's it look like compared to a GTX 590? So, guess what? I happen to have, as us being a, a, one of the exclusive launch partners for the GTX 590, I have an ASUS GTX 590 part. And uh, a beautifully and well-designed card in terms of being elegant, sensible in terms of its form factor, um, quiet, uh, overall great design product here. Um, with the 590, but uh, just Mars 2 here just totally eclipses this in terms of its overall size and uh, performance. So you can see here, if we just go one to one, that's a GTX 590, and that's your Mars 2 part. And go ahead and just uh, turn this over here. Quite a difference in terms of this. So your default uh, GTX 590 here is, I believe, running at a core clock uh, for the GPUs at 607 megahertz, while here we're running at 782 megahertz, and uh, we're running two bin versions of the GTX 580 cores, and uh, in some and most of our internal testing, we're usually able to see over 800 megahertz in terms of overclocking as well, usually somewhere between about 810 to 820, possibly even more, and that's usually keeping the auto fan profile, so still quite a quiet solution. Uh, of course, if you were to ramp up the fan and uh, go even higher, uh, then we could probably even get more out of it in terms of clock speed. But uh, there we have a comparison in terms of those. So 
Let's go ahead and set this back off to the side and take a look at some of the other connections that we see available here. So um, we'll go ahead and first take a look at the I.O. connectivity. So you can see right here, we've got two DVI ports, full display ports, so no adapter required. You don't have to run out and get anything along those lines. It's already native to that. And then we have a full HDMI as well, no adapter required. So it gives you the full display connectivity without having to wire about any type of adapters or anything like that that you might need. Uh, when we take a look here, uh, we've got a triple DVI in here. We've gone ahead and optioned out that to be able to give you all the connections in terms of full HDMI, full display port, and DVI. But as you see that we're still not limited here in terms of being able to run a native 3D vision surround out the box, so you still have that connectivity available to you. In terms of the secondary power connectivity, when we look at that, we can see here that the card utilizes three eight pin PCIe power connectors. And that's predominantly from the fact that we need help to the need to ensure uh, over 600 watts of current delivery, especially if the card was gonna be under full sustained load or gonna be overclocked. So this is helping to ensure reliable, clean, stable power, uh, as long as you've got a solid PSU to be able to back it up, such as uh, those AX series from Corsair. And we can see, of course, on the reference part design, uh, it's utilizing two eight pins. And then in terms of the rest of standard connectivity, we've got the SLI connector uh, right there. Got your 516 PCIe Gen 2. Okay. And then in terms of the card itself, uh, the first thing you're gonna see here is this complete um, aluminum uh, heat sink that we actually put on the entire top of the card itself. This serves two functions to help slightly dissipate heat. Um, two, it also aesthetically looks great. And then three, it actually also serves as a counterbalance mechanism because we actually have a wrapped PCIe sustainer. So you can see there's a metal plate that runs underneath this portion and there's a cross hatch angle here that goes ahead and attaches to the back PCIe sustainer bracket for the back of the card. So overall giving it a very, very good level of rigidity and uh, to ensure an easy installation in your chassis without causing any over torquing or stressing. So, we're gonna go ahead and actually now jump to a, a Mars 2 card that I've gone ahead and disassembled to take a look at some of the other elements regarding the design of the card. And we'll leave our, our awesome little Mars 2 card there. Got our GTX 590 once again there for reference. So, let's take a look here. So here we can first see, this is the actual heat sink alone, excuse me, uh, not the heat sink, but the fan assembly. So we've got the two 12, cent 12 centimeter fans. This is utilizing our special and uh, proprietary dust proof fan technology. Essentially what that means is that the hub assembly within each one of these is double sealed to minimize the buildup of any type of dust, debris, or dander. So that essentially over time, when there's no dust, debris, or dander building up within there, uh, the fan blades of course can rotate normally and, and not hopefully impact the overall lifespan and the reliability of the product. Of course, doesn't mean that uh, fan itself might not still potentially settle in there and you're going to always want to try to be proactive about blowing that out. But in terms of helping to improve the overall liability of the product, uh, we are doing something in terms of the internal uh, hub assembly. So as we noted here, we can see these were the actual links going from the heat sink underneath here. They then go to the back of the card, attached to the card to help to create the sustain. And we've got uh, your connectors here. One cool thing about this card is that these fans actually support uh, mm, custom fan control in terms of not only setting a percentage base but a gradient ramp base so you have a lot of flexibility in terms of the way that goes. Okay, So that gives you an idea there once again of the Mars 2 fan assembly. next part, as we can see here, one of the big aspects of how we're helping to deal with uh, the large amount of heat that we have to output from these GTX 580 cores. And uh, here we have our Direct CU2 technology. Uh, so you can see here we've got these awesome flattened large uh, in millimeter heat pipe, uh, copper pipes that actually will run in direct contact with each GPU and goes to this large aluminum heat sink 
uh, body here to actively dissipate the heat and then you've got these 12 centimeter fans blowing on top of each one of these to help go ahead and dissipate and control that heat output. So it's a very efficient and quiet and effective design. We then move over here directly to the Mars 2 itself. You can just take a look at this and just realize the amount of R&D and engineering that we have to do with this class of product. So extensive here we can see the super alloy implementation where we have our super alloy chokes, our super alloy capacitors and then our super alloy MOS. Uh, this is a specially internally developed metallurgic process which helps to produce uh, a, a much more efficient, a much more reliable and uh, an overall a more flexible power delivery system that helps gives us more flexibility at being able to drive higher levels of voltage as well as to be able to drop operating temperature and help improve component lifespan. Uh, up here we can of course see outside of this insane 21 phase VRM design we've got the two GTX 580 GPUs itself uh, we've got the three gigabytes of memory of course the memory allocated to each GPU we can see here on the card so we actually have a hundred percent fan button and that's great for those diehard enthusiasts that maybe are going to be using this uh, for extensive overclocking runs uh, maybe they just want to do some benching in between uh, playing games uh, maybe they just kind of want to test how things uh, run in terms of temperature uh, how they are going to be at higher speeds and that easily can just go ahead and be depressed so as an example that I can go ahead and just press this here that will go ahead and run the fan at hundred percent and then once you go ahead and disable that uh, it will go back to the automatic BIOS coded fan ramping policy which is very effective so that gives you a little bit of an idea there uh, kind of taking a look at uh, the Mars 2 and, and all its levels from there being here the bare straight card the fully assembled uh, card and then of course uh, the fan and uh, heatsink assembly here and then of course uh, the direct CU2 uh, heat pipes and heatsink assembly so it takes you through all stages here of the actual Mars 2 product so um, overall you can see definitely the amount of time and effort that we've done putting together this card here. So next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is round out is we're going to jump into uh, some of the software aspects that are going to be as part of the Mars 2. Uh, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, feedback, anything that you're interested in, in seeing, uh, please let us know whether, whether it's on our Facebook page, Twitter, YouTube here, or whether it's in the ASUS ROG forums. So thanks for uh, stopping in here for this unboxing and take care.